Welcome to chapter five. This is about the effects screen. So we've talked about the home screen and the various uh, things you can control there. The next step sort of down the rabbit hole, as it were, when you're uh, dealing with these, these units and you want to get a little bit more complex would be pressing the effects button, which then, as you can see here, shows me what effects are turned on and off. So if I sing, hi, no reverb, nothing, totally flat, add some reverb, add some delay, add some micro mod, rhythmic. So you can see how it's very easy to turn on and off all these effects as you're going. It's also the way you modify what happens on the hit button, which is really cool. So you could say, I've got the hit button on here, but I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to get rid of these things. Okay, let's start from scratch. When I press the hit button, nothing happens. There's no effects turned on. But I say, I'd like a reverb on and some doubling at the beginning. So I've got this sound right now as my basic sound. But when I have the, the hit button come on, I want to have that rhythmic crazy thing happen. So I press the hit button and you'll notice those two things turn off because I haven't set them to be on when the hit button is on. So I'll go back and I'll say, okay, I want reverb and double to remain on. So now when I press the hit button, nothing changes, those two stay. But I say, ah, when that hit button is lit up, I want that rhythmic to come on. That's as much as you have to do to set it. Reverb and double are on, rhythmic comes on, rhythmic comes off when the hit button happens. If you want to get a little more complex than that, you could say, I want rhythmic to come on, but I want delay, or doubling, sorry, to turn off. So let's do that. Go to this hit state that we like. We got rhythmic on, doubling, and reverb. I just say I want that doubling to go away. There it is. Now you'll see reverb and double, and then rhythmic and reverb. So the sounds are, hey, I've got my rhythmic and double, or sorry, reverb and double. Now I got my crazy rhythmic and the double's gone away. So it's really neat. You can set up a preset extremely quickly that way. Really, really cool to do. Um, so we've assigned the hit button. Now the next kind of really fun thing we're gonna get into is doing the slider effects. So I'm just gonna start with an easy one here that we can hear very quickly. Um, let's do a, a shift. So the slider effect bar, as you've probably seen you know, on the box, you've probably even tried it out a little bit, but if you haven't, you can use your finger to manipulate the sound of your voice within any preset, and you can set it to be whatever this setting is. So you could you say, I want this to always be shift, or I want it to be you know, this particular type of, of slider effect. So I can say, I've got my reverb and double, but I want to shift my voice around with my finger whenever I want to do it. You say, that's cool, but I don't like that one. I want to try all these other ones that are in there, the other slider effects that you can do. Press and hold the effects button, and then tap the arrow. So now it's changing. You'll see it's rhythmic division now. Tap it again, rhythmic depth. I can go back the other way, back to shift narrow where I was. So this is that shift narrow. Or I can go to rhythmic division. So hey, oh, we got to get a rhythmic that has a division. Let's go to chopper here. We definitely know that has a division. Hey, and what you're noticing is it slaps back to the middle every time. See, it snaps back here, whoop, right back. Because you wouldn't necessarily want to leave it in a weird place if you were shifting your voice or doing some sort of effect. You kind of want it to go back to normal at the end of that effect. So that's the way that a lot of these, uh, you'll see these little arrows in here, it's sort of saying that you know when it's like uh, arrows like this, that it's, it's snapping back to the middle. It lets you go one way or the other way, but it snaps back to the center. So what if I wanna change the way that that works? I would press and hold effects, and then I would tap on the arrows themselves, or sorry, on the inside, there we go. So now you can see these arrows are changing. So I'm not actually tapping on the outside arrow, I'm tapping on the inside. So we see you got the two outside ones, snaps to the middle. If I go to the next one here, it goes from one end to the other. So it'd be from the, the minimum value, minimum value to the max, max. Okay. We go to the next one. Goes the other way from high to low. And the way that it works is it doesn't go from the absolute minimum value or the absolute maximum value. It goes from the value it's currently set at. So if you're set at say 50, and you select the one that only goes one direction from one side to the other, it'll go say from 50 down and then back up to 50 or 50 up and then back to 50. So that can be really useful as well if you wanna have a, a base level, a setting of some sort that you want it to be you know, always at and then you wanna go away from that particular setting. And the last one that we've got here is this internal one where basically wherever you press on the button is where it starts from and then you can go up and down from there. So hey. So you can see I can't quite get as low because I started down here. But if I start up here, hey. start down low and go high. Hey. It 
limits the, the range one way or the other, but allows you to go further in the other direction. So it's, it's really just a matter of personal choice on how you use those. The last thing about the, this screen is once you've made some changes like this, you've said, you know, I've set up this stutter or I've set up this rhythmic thing and I've got the hit button doing what I want it to do. I want to store the preset. So storing the preset, you simply press store. It comes up with the ability for you to rename it. So you can use the slider bar here to change the letter. Then you can also use the arrows to move letters. So you can see I'm moving across here. And then there's things like I can delete letters or I can insert spaces, that kind of stuff. And the other thing you can choose is, is store two here. So if you're on store two and it says 29 and you say, I want to take this preset and I want to actually store it to preset number 50 space. I would just slide along 48, 49, 50. It's going to overwrite closer, nine inch nails closer with G, V and then space, space, I, B, S. So we go store again here to finish it, and it's stored to preset number 50 here. And what that means is that original preset that we had actually still exists, and this is like a new modified copy of that preset. Uh, so that's a really neat way of being able to, to preserve something you like, modify it a bit, change it maybe for a different part of a song. Um, you noticed uh, if you've watched my video on song building, I did that quite a bit because I wanted to preserve stuff like the reverb, you know, things that were the same all the time. I didn't want that to go away. I just wanted to say, use that same reverb, and now we'll add something else for this particular part of the song. So that covers your effect screen and its basic usage.